Why hello there, Anxious Cynic back again with another Minimator tutorial. So something I've noticed in the community quite a bit is uh, people have trouble lighting nighttime scenes. I actually did a tutorial on improved lighting where I covered nighttime lighting as well, but I thought maybe it needed its own tutorial to help some people and to maybe share some more tips that I've discovered since then for basic nighttime illumination for a typical scene you might have in a Minecraft animation. So we're not going to cover anything too advanced here. We're just going to go for basic illumination so that you get a usable result from your animation scenes that are at night. As you can see here, we've got a scene set up and we've got Steve sitting there and we got our camera. So what I'm going to do first is just go ahead and turn on rendering and we'll see the basic lighting that you get with Minimator. And uh, if I drag this down, if we want this to be straight up nighttime, and I want it to be night because I want to see the moon. There is a way, you know, you could color correct and do some things with it still daytime, but I want to be able to see the moon. I want the moon in my shot if I could find it. There it is. And uh, bring that over somewhere where I can actually have it in my camera view at some point, you know? I don't want to just have the sun in my nighttime shot, right? So now that we've got that set up, as you can see, this is the lighting that you get by default and some people tend to go with this and you can't really see what's happening maybe you know because when you're animating it you don't have the lighting on or whatever and you're animating you're like this is great but your final results gonna look like this and nobody can see what's happening so what we can do instead of relying on the light that Minimator gives us out of the box here we're gonna add a point light or a spotlight now typically I use spotlights because in my opinion uh, moonlight is a little bit more direct directional uh, it's not as bright as the sun, so you do get a little bit more of a directional light that is not covering everything, and it may cast more shadows. So basically what I would do, I'm just going to identify where my moon is going to be. Let's just say we're going to put the moon over here. So this is going to be more or less where our light is coming from. So what I'm going to do is try to mimic that angle with the spotlight, as you can see here. Just go like this and maybe the moon is shining about that angle. I don't necessarily have to keep it this way. This is just where we're going to start with it. So as you can see down here, we've got a dang old spotlight kind of shining over there. And what we're going to do is go to the light properties and we're going to change some of these parameters. First of all, I'm going to raise it up. We do not have it in the right position. It's way too close. So I'm just going to kind of bring it back here and imagine that it's the moon looming above our scene. And then we're going to have to adjust some of these other parameters here. So as you can see, we're not getting much effect here, but if I bring the range up, just bring it way on up, we could max it out if we wanted to, uh, just whatever, however big your scene is and things like that. But let's just go with about like 10,000 just for now. And we're gonna bring the radius up, because as you see, like you don't want it to be that narrow. You wanna have this, uh, let me back the camera up. We want it to encompass more of the scene. So uh, let's go ahead and bring that radius up so it's covering pretty much the whole thing. You get a nice even light. Uh, the softness or the sharpness on the spot isn't really that big of a deal. It really depends on how you want to light your scene. I might bring it up to about 60 just to give the edges a little bit softer light so they don't stick out too harshly in case the camera were to show up a part of the scene that we don't necessarily want to show. And we also have this fade size here. So we're just going to take this and bring it out or in however you want to describe it, to 0%, and that way the light is going to be pretty much even over the entire scene. Once again, this is something that you may customize depending on what your scene is, but for now, that's what we're going to go with. And as you can see, we have this kind of nice light here. It doesn't look very good because <laughs> it's a white light, and typically the way you would simulate nighttime lighting is you would want to go to the color, and let's bring it down to a little bit of a bluish hue. It kind of depends on what you want. One thing you can do with this is actually control the brightness of the light with the color as well. So as you can see here, I'm bringing it down to a really, really deep blue and uh, it goes really dark, but we can, you know, make it even more blue. I tend to kind of try to keep it a little bit subtle. I don't want it to be too blue. It's a little bit oversold on the effect or whatever, in my opinion. So what we're going to do is just kind of go with a somewhere kind of a softer blue slightly darker maybe something like that and there you go you get this nice little illumination of the scene it looks kind of like it's night it looks like you've got some moon illumination going on you've got some kind of harsh shadows from that and whatnot so that's pretty good that's not too bad but let's go on in here and uh, zoom in on our 
our scene a little bit, get some more detail brought up, and uh, we're gonna mess with some things in the background tab here and see if we can improve on this. So uh, another thing you can do is you can come down here to these options here. I don't think the sunlight color is gonna do much for you. You can just make that slightly blue depending on uh, how dark you have your scene. If you do have a little bit of sunlight still giving away, then you can change that color to kind of mimic the moonlight as well so you get more of an even hue over everything. And we're gonna come over here to the ambient color. We're just gonna mess with this a little bit, bring this over to a blue. And uh, as you can see, let's bring this over so we can kind of see what's going on a little bit better. As you can see here, this it's a pretty subtle change, but one of the things I'll typically do is bring it over here and kind of give it a slight bluish color, something like that. Typically you'll see the effects of this much more in a daylight scene, but just for the sake of consistency, do things like that. And uh, yeah, so far we're not doing too bad here. As you can see, it's a pretty bright spot over there, whereas not so much over here. It kind of depends on how you place your light. You may want to finagle with that yeah, just a little bit uh, in your scene to make sure you get the right lighting and whatnot. Uh, I can also, let's just back this up. Let's just say that that's maybe a bit too directional. Maybe I don't want it to be quite so directional on the scene. So uh, what I'll try to do here is select the point light. Maybe we'll bring it down just because we don't want maybe quite as much shadowiness going on. And I'll drag this over the scene a bit more. Something like that. It really depends on how specific your uh, lighting needs to be for your angle. Like you can always change the position of this based on your camera angle as well. Just keyframe the spotlight. So say if uh, I have the camera and I'm going to just set these keyframes to instant. Like so. And then I'm going to take the camera and I'm going to position it. Say we're going to switch to a... Oh, oh my god. We're going to switch to a close-up of Steve at this point, right? And this lighting isn't too good on Steve, even if it looks somewhat okay back here. I wouldn't necessarily say this is the best lighting. Uh, but what we're going to do as well is take these keyframes, and I'm going to make them instant transitioned as well. And uh, let me just fix this up, because it's kind of bugging me a little bit. I'm going to give it a little bit more of how we had it a second ago. We'll just go with something like that. Doesn't look too bad, kind of a nice serene little nighttime scene. And then when we come over here, then you see that this is not so great. So what we're gonna do is take our spotlight and we're just gonna finagle it a little bit, all right? Just gonna bring it over, something like this. And uh, I'm just changing the rotation, you know, depending on where the light's at, where it's supposed to be, what it's supposed to be doing. Something like this. I try to keep the angle as much as possible uh, consistent. So, you know, at first we had the light coming from left to right. So I want to try to mimic that anytime I change the lighting. But you can be creative with it. Uh, it may not stick out. It really depends on the camera work you're doing. But uh, something like that. And as you can see, we kind of maintain that same look. It still looks night. It still looks dark. And Steve is now lit. But back here, the camera was completely different. So you can see Steve down there. So we have this shot and then we play it. It comes to this and Steve is lit. And there's not a drastic change there based on the camera angle that the viewer can most likely detect. So you get the lighting that you want for each shot with it looking pretty much consistent across the entire animation. So that's pretty much the basics, I would say, of a nighttime scene and getting somewhat improved lighting. Remember, this is basically just the lighting you would need to give you a somewhat realistic lighting effect for nighttime, but being able to see what's happening in the scene if you don't really want to go through a lot of trouble to customize the lighting in your animation. At least make it where people can see it. Uh, so just as a little touch up here, what we can also do, uh, if you want to improve your lighting even more, is imagine light sources in the scene that are elsewhere. So for instance, let's say that there's a light in this building here. If I go ahead and bring in a point light, we're gonna do like so. I'm gonna grab this light. And as you can see, it's kind of ruining the lighting of my scene, but uh, we're just gonna drag it into this building, bring it up into here. Let's zoom in on it and kind of get an idea of what it's doing. It's gonna try to pretty much just logically bring it in as though there's like a lamp in the ceiling or something like that. Doesn't necessarily have to be this way, but just for the sake of getting us started on our look here, we're gonna go with something like that. And I'm gonna change this one to say an orange, kind of a 
maybe a darker orange, you know, it's not meant to be too terribly bright. Something like that, maybe we'll just try it. And uh, then we can do very similarly with this one. As you can see, we're gonna bring that fade up. Let's go ahead and do like this. So you've got this fade that we can bring up and down depending on how you wanna see it. And as you can see back here, we've got this light shooting through the glass kind of look and we got a little bit of it here as well. You can come over here and you can see how this lighting is coming through and casting that nice little hue right there. And it gives us some extra little oomph to our scene, a little bit more life to the world that we're existing in or whatever. Uh, we can bring this up or down depending on how we want to go about it. I feel like maybe that's a little bit strong there, so maybe around 180 in this particular instance. And I can keep the light out here, or the camera out here rather, um, and just kind of keep an eye on what the lighting is doing. And then I can take this lamp and kind of drag it up and down. Try to get kind of a, an idea of what it's going to do for us here. Note that when I bring it up, I may be wanting the look of it to be different here, but when I bring it up, it's kind of coming through the roof and causing that to happen. We do not want that. So I'm just going to bring it pretty much as high as I can without it shining through the ceiling. And then you get this nice, cool look here of a light coming through on our uh, scene where Steve is out here. And uh, maybe we can even make Steve look kind of cool. We're just kind of playing around right now. I hope you understand that because uh, you can get some really cool effects. And I just want to show you guys some simple little things you can do. You don't have to use like tons of lights or a lot of know-how or anything. It's all pretty simple stuff. And it can really help improve your animation a little bit or a lot. So uh, there you go. Steve's sitting there. He's got a dang old light casting over him. He's got the blue light from the moon. He's got light from the the dang old torches inside this building and whatnot. It's very cool and looks pretty good, especially if you actually went through and really set this up properly and got a nice lighting scheme set up. So that's pretty much it, guys. It's just my basic tips that I thought would be helpful to some of you. Doing nighttime scenes can be somewhat challenging due to how you know, shadowy it can be and whatnot, but a few simple little additions like that. And I try to use as minimal light as possible or point lights and spotlights because it will hit your computer. You know, you will be experiencing performance issues. So there are some people who like light the entire scene with a tons of lights and whatnot, but I'm trying to do it the simplest, easiest way that will hopefully not overpower your computer and whatnot. So you can just do a couple of little lights like that. And uh, if you're trying to light multiple buildings, uh, you can always just move the point light from building to building depending on how your shot needs to go. If you do need to use more, then that's fine. It's up to you, whatever works for you and your rig. But uh, that's going to be about it. Hopefully this was helpful to you guys. Hopefully you learned a little something. There's probably other things that we could delve into if you guys want to chime in in the comments and let me know of anything that I missed or that I forgot or that you think would be helpful, especially to the the uh, new people out there who are trying to get their feet wet in the world of Minimator Minecraft animation. Be sure to chime in in the comments with any of your thoughts. And uh, yeah, that should just about do it. So thanks for watching, guys. Hope this video was helpful. Hope you liked it. If you did, feel free to hit that like button, comment, and subscribe to become a citizen today. Share it with your friends and your family and your pets. And I will see you guys in the next video.